students. Okay, we're back with the um, demonstration on the flanged lid. Now, this lid is different than the lid that you previously saw that is a lid that insets into the jar. This lid has the flange built into the lid, not into the jar. This is just a smooth, straight interior, and we have built the flange, or thrown the flange, actually into the lid, so it sinks down into the jar and locks it in that way. This is thrown upside down, trimmed later with the knob added, and that will be in the second video that includes trimming of this form and trimming of this lid. So let me show you how we make this one. I have my bat, and once again, you always want to throw everything on a bat whenever possible. So that way you don't distort any measurements by sliding your pot onto a board. And any time that you're going to throw um, a form that has two pieces that need to fit together, Precisely, I always recommend throwing them on a bat so you don't have to move it, you don't have to touch it, how you throw it, and the measurement that you take from it and give it is just set. All you have to do is pop it out in the sun or let it stiffen up and trim it later. So I'm just gonna center this ball of clay And for this one, I will make a wider form, I think. So I'm gonna open my ball of clay now that it's centered. I'm gonna go inside and spread my floor and I'm gonna spread it pretty wide because I wanna make a wider form. Compress the interior, I'm just doing that with my fingertips. I'm just gonna cone this in just a little bit and now I'm going to do that little mini pull that I like to do to thin my clay out before I do my initial big pull. Slow my wheel down a hair and I'm going to reach in from the bottom, grab, squeeze, and pull my clay up, compress the rim, One more pull. And another nice big pull from the bottom. Now because I don't have my flange built into the rim of my pot, I can make it a little thinner. The flange is in the lid so I can compress this. And if you find that you have a wobble, that's totally fine. Let me show you how we cut it away. You will see ceramicists use their needle tool, but I prefer to use my wire. I feel like I have more control. I wind it up in my hands so I just have a little bit exposed like that and the toggles are tucked into my, my fist so they don't dingle down and hit my pot. And then, just like I'm going to floss my teeth, I just dip down into the form about a half an inch and cut away the offending wobbly rim. Now I can compress this and make it true. Now, this pot looks good. It just doesn't have a lot of shape. So let's shape it up. I'm gonna collar in the rim of the pot as a starting point. I'm going to flatten out the side and however you decide to shape your form is up to you. But always creating 
good form is the number one thing that we think about as ceramicists and as potters. Making beautiful, elegant forms. So I kind of have this really fun mushroom stem shape here that I like a lot, kind of mid-century. Okay, I'm just gonna smooth that out. I'm gonna compress my rim and I wanna make sure that it's nice and true. I'm gonna undercut that, stop my wheel, and then what do I do next? Take my measurement. So I'm gonna take the winged side of the calipers and I'm gonna take a measurement on the interior here. I'm gonna spread it open a little bit so it's just touching the sides of the pot barely. Okay, it has this smallest little mark right there, so I know that I've expanded them far enough. There's nothing worse than having a, a lid that is too small and it rattles around in your pot. So I'm gonna set this aside, and now I'm gonna show you how to create this flanged lid off the hump. Okay, so throwing a lid off the hump is sometimes easier for potters or could be more difficult. I like to throw my lids all separately on separate bats, but if you want to try throwing off the hump, you are welcome to. I'm going to show you how to do this. You basically get a large piece of clay and you get it roughly centered. Then you start to section off and squeeze off a little bit of an area that will be simply for your lid. This part will be for your lid. And oftentimes potters throw off the hump so they can make multiple cups, multiple lids, multiple teapot spouts, lots of small things so they don't have to keep taking one piece of clay, wedging another piece of clay. It's sort of alleviates all that clay prep. Um, but sometimes it's hard to get scale and sizing correct. But with lids, you can try this and see if you like throwing off the hump. Um, so I section off a bit of my clay. And then before I go any further, I do the measurement test. So I know that my lidded jar needs to have a lid where the flange is that wide. This one is not as wide, but this is like the example. So I'm going to hold my calipers and kind of do a visual imagining of how big I can create a lid for this, and this is a good size. This is a good amount of clay for that. So to create the flange lid, I'm gonna start by opening my ball of clay here. And I use my thumbs to sort of open it just like we would anything else. I'm gonna compress now that I've opened. I'm gonna spread this open a little bit and I'm providing quite a bit of support on the underside with my left hand. So I'm opening this up into a shallow, very thick bowl. And I'm compressing the rim. I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna take a quick measurement and see if I'm in the world, in the neighborhood of the jar that I need to make, and I am. So I'm gonna compress this and make it very flat because I am going to have to now use my trusty wooden rib with the sharp angle and I'm gonna split the rim. This time I have the sharp edge facing in and I want you to watch this part really closely. I'm going to hydrate and put water to lubricate the rim of my pot here I'm gonna hold my rim very carefully. 
and I'm going to start to split the rim and press down the flange of the lidded jar and create the flange that's going to drop into the lidded form into the, the bottom of the jar. Now I'm gonna straighten this out. I need to add a little water here. I'm gonna compress the edge of this, thin it out a little bit, articulate it, make it look a little nicer. And before I go any further, take my measurement again. Now I can see here that this is a little bit bigger than it needs to be, okay? This flange will not drop into the form. So to fix that, I'm gonna take my wooden rib again and gently push in and nudge in the flange until I get a clean measurement. There we go. So I can see that my calipers on either side just drop right down into the form. We don't want to make our lids very thick. We don't want to make them very thin either because when they're really thin, you have no wiggle room to trim them a little bit to have everything fit very well. Now, when we throw off the hump, there's always a risk that we get a little S crack in the bottom of our forms, in this case, the top of our lid, because we're not compressing very firmly against the wheel head or the bat head when we throw just a simple form on a bat. When we throw off the hump, there's a lot of loose clay particles underneath our form. So I usually take the back side of my wooden trim tool and I pound the interior to give it an extra layer of compression, run my sponge over any markings that makes, compress one additional time. Okay, now that this is thrown, how do we get this off the hump? Well, we are going to have to carefully, let me lower my camera to see if you can see this. We're gonna have to carefully cut right at the baseline and create a nice groove with our wooden stick. When we create this nice groove, it gives a perfect track for where our wire can lay down into the form. And when I cut with my wire, I don't cut straight across. I like to lay it into the groove and then wrap it around and make sure it goes all the way around like that. Okay. And then I pull one side through the form and I use my finger up against my clay as a guide. Now I will lift this off very carefully and I will set this on a board to go dry in the sun a little bit and then I'll trim the underside and put a knob on it in the next demo.